we put in the old one, close it, and return the new one. So that means that we could have contents equal to new page, and then we say PDF document contents. So though that there's a new document, and then we need to print the background and the row header. So that's also a thing. Mm. Guess these could be inside of this new page as well, because those are tightly coupled cu uh, with this. And we can say that can supply this as well. Don't think we will change it in the future, but could be good to actually supply it to the new um, new page as well. So that's the row Y. So let's see here. Here we have an invoice row printer and we are at the first page. So we could say here that Row size is 24. Or max row. Max row size is 24. And Breakpoint 12 and max page 16. There we go. Um, so let's see here. We need also an number of printed rows. That starts at zero. So when we print the document, we need to increment this here. And if rows hmm. if new page required. This value and rows left. Yes, and if a new row, if new page is required. Then we will uh, 
set this new page. We will also go in and set all these values to the new values. Just for kicks. So here we will change everything up so the max row size is 22 at 31. Max page is 20. Let's see here. How did I put this? Max page is 24. And breakpoint is 18. So I guess these labels are a bit off. So max page with summation. That's better. And I think these need to be private part of this because we want to use them in the function. There we go. So let's look at this new page required then. And it's a private function. It takes a number of rows and rows total rows. So let's see here. This, then we should also say that printed rows should be back to zero as well. So let's see here. If number non printed rows is larger or equal to max row size. Then we just return true, because then we have uh, printed all the rows that we can do on this side, uh, this page. So that's easy. And um, let's see here. If uh, max page with summation, let's see here. I think uh, we need to actually have a rows left. That's how many rows are left. And if we create a new page, we will subtract the rows left with, let's see here, printed rows. There we go. So here we have rows left. So if the page with summation uh, value is smaller than the rows left, uh, okay, but and it's still 
rows left are smaller than the max number of rows on a page. Yeah, then if the number of printed rows are larger than the breakpoint, then we return true. So that's a hard case as well. But if we have the other case that the rows left are less or equal to the page max page with summation and the number of printed rows no that case will never happen right because if we have um, fewer rows left than the max page with the summation, then we wa don't want to split up the page. So in every other case, we return false. We could add some of these just to make this a bit more readable. And number of printed rows should of course not have that. So these are the two cases that we could have. We have um, one case that uh, we have come to the end of this the, this page we can't print any more pay, uh, more rows then we need a new page that's just it but then we have this strange edge case where the rows left are less than the max page with summation and no they are larger than the max uh, page with summation, but less than the uh, row size of the full page, max row size, then we want it to end at the breakpoint. So I think this have uh, explained that. So now we only have one very interesting part left, and that's actually trying this. Now that's a bit scary because now we have actually talked a lot, a lot of code and we haven't actually ran anything yet. So here we created a new row that's not interesting any longer. This prints the background so that's not that interesting either. Um, and here we print the summary. But I guess this new page, we also need to know if this page should be the last page or if it should be another page. So. Number of rows. Here, so this is a bit, a bit more hairy. So we print the first page. And that will automatically print 24, but that's not the right amount if we have less than. So we need this value to be above here. 
So if rows left are less than the page with summation, then we will uh, print that. Else we will print the max row size. So that's using the values that we have to make it a bit more understandable. So if we have less than uh, less rows than the max page with summation, well, then we will uh, just use that value and print that many rows. So I guess that we have the same logic up here. Um, but we could put it down here just to make it less cluttered. So this seems reasonable to me. We could have edge cases that doesn't uh, work. And we could also have uh, done a really weird Uh, logical mishap somewhere, but hopefully we have thought this true correctly. So let's try this out. So we have a lot of things that isn't right. Uh, unexpected return value on page 83. Mm. Ah, of course, we want to return a boolean. That's the whole point of that function. And uh, see here, method new page cannot be applied to given time types new page let's see new page it takes row number of rows contents and document let's see here new page document contents number of rows and what was the other value row y yeah row y row y supply all the values or else it doesn't know how to do it. So let's see here what we will end up with. This is going to be interesting. It takes a long while to actually print. So the first page was correct. Second page, hmm, almost. And then we have a lot of pages. That is almost correct. And the last 33rd page is also correct. Awesome! Uh, really happy about this. Um, we just need to change up the logic for where to put the first row. So I think that the only thing we need to do is put this subtraction further up. That should do, do the trick, I think. So let's try that. Nice that it takes a while to, yeah, 
But now we have printed one too many rows on the first page. So we need to change that value. The first page can't print here. Where do we have it? Um, invoice. The first page can't be the max of 24, only 23. Um, that should fix that issue. Trim the values a bit. No. Why didn't it change it to twenty two then? I thought I changed the value. Is it that I change both? Could be that. Let's see, build, build, run. I don't need to build it again, I want to see it. So we just push it up, yeah. So we just want to print one less, or we want the header to print one more on the first page. Row background. Max row size. Hmm. The strange part is that it's just the first page that has this issue. All the next pages will solve this issue. So perhaps we just do that. Yeah, of course, because we have the addition before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totally reasonable. So if we do the addition beforehand, it will break earlier on the first page. And that will actually count correctly. Nope. Run. Yeah. That's fine. We created thirty three pages. And there was a lot of numbers here. Well, that was fun, um, really fun. Uh, but I guess that I actually want to have 33 rows and 30 rows, because I think they are pushing it a bit. The low end here, see how it looks on the last page. Yeah, we don't have that much space on the large pa last page either. And I think that we have one too many rows on the page with summation as well. Uh, then 23, 
what did I say up here? 16. Yeah, because the last page is a bit tight. So, change the, that up a bit. Run it again. Yeah, we got one more page, but that's fine. I think this looks really nice. So let's change change it up and try our other example here. We have this empty example that we need to uh, handle as well. So let's see if we have an empty document that works fine if we have a single document also work fine I hope yep and a few should work as well just that few So, in this episode we have implemented a function to split up a large data set into multiple pages and present them in rows and created some logic for that. Um, and this logic was mostly that we needed to figure out a, a way to split the different pages. In, in a good way. So we had the number of rows that were required to print when we had the summation and the maximum amount of rows that we could ha have on the page. We figured out some breakpoint where we wanted to break if we couldn't um, print the summation on this page but we uh, should we didn't have any new rows on the new page if if uh, the value were between the max row size and the page size with summation. And we also figured out the values for the next page uh, in succession. Created a, a small um, function to see if a new page was required. We also handled with a function how to create new pages in a document. And then we reused a lot of code that we have already implemented. So that made it a bit easier for us. Uh, this uh, video is a bit long, so I will split it up in two. And uh, I really hope that you learned something from this video. Uh, everything that I have created uh, in this uh, example will be available on GitHub. So check it out there. Um, please leave a nice comment if you have anything that you think we could do better with this example or anything that I can talk about that uh, could be interesting to add to this example or anything like that. Um, and share it with your colleagues, uh, give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more examples like this one. Uh, I'm looking into uh, doing uh, something a bit more graphic heavy next time so that could be really interesting and um, but until then i really hope that you have uh, liked this video and uh, i really hope to see you in the next one